ideas, imagination, inspiration, macro world. Here's your host, Ray Scott. Hi, and welcome to the very first installment of Macro World. This is a brand new channel on YouTube, and I am really happy to bring it to you. I'm Ray Scott. Now, some of you may know me from my other channel called Visual Art Photography Tutorials. And that channel is all about different kinds of photography. This channel, Macro World, is only about one thing, macro photography. Now, it's for all of you photographers out there that I affectionately call macro maniacs. I know I'm one of them. We just love taking the tiny world and showing it in a really big way. And that's what this channel is going to be all about over the next few years. We're going to have all kinds of different projects. I'm going to hope that I can inspire you. I'm going to hope that you can inspire me to look at all kinds of different things that are small and show them off in a way that we just don't usually see them. That's going to be Macro World. Now today, we're going to be taking a look at a fork and water. And we're going to be looking at it in different ways. And I have some techniques and some ideas on this that I'm going to show you. Oh, and by the way, if you aren't familiar with my visual art photography channel and you'd like to check it out, I put the link below in the description for you. And also, if you'd like to subscribe to Macro World, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the bell icon and then set your notifications to all so that you'll get all of the notifications for all the new videos that come out so that you won't miss any of the action. Okay, today's project, the fork in the water, macro photography style. What are you gonna need? Well, pretty obvious, we're gonna need a fork. All right, then you're going to need some kind of a vessel to hold a little bit of water. Now, in, in my case, I'm using a Pyrex dish. It doesn't have to be that, it could be anything else, just something that I happen to have handy. But I did want the uh, bottom to be black, so I used my very famous black velvet. I like using this a lot in different things, so because it absorbs light and it's very, obviously it's black, it's very, very dark. And also, totally optional, but because of an effect that I wanted to work on, and I'm going to show you that in a moment, I brought out something from the past, which is a piece of polymetal that I set up on a board years ago for a photography project, and I just happened to have it around. I'm going to be using this to do um, some reflecting. Now, you can use a reflector or, you know, any number of other things or not. Totally up to you. It's just something that I will be showing you uh, what I'm doing with it. All right, let's first look at the setup, and then let's take a look at how to do it, and then let's take a look at all of the different things that we can do with this really simple setup macro fork today. So here we are with the basic setup. You see the black velvet underneath the Pyrex dish. The Pyrex dish is holding water and of course the fork. Now I want you to notice that in the background I have a black piece of velvet there as well because I really wanted everything to be dark. Uh, you may want something a little bit different. Now you concentrate on focusing on the fork and of course while you're doing this project you're going to be moving the fork around in different positions for different effects. But as I mentioned before, I used something, the poly metal. And because going into this project, I really wanted something that looked kind of chrome-like. That's what I was looking for. Um, as it turned out, my chrome pictures were okay, but I found something that I liked even more. So we're going to go through all those steps right now. So we start off with the poly metal. And what the poly metal is doing is it's creating this this chrome like look on the water. Now I also took this into Photoshop and used the filter chrome so that also enhanced it and made it look uh, like that. Same shot but cropped in really really close for a different effect but I wasn't getting what I wanted yet. This shot here was what I had been looking for. This is what I had in my mind's eye when I started out. This has that metallic look. It has that chrome look. And again, I brought it through Photoshop and in the, in the filter gallery, I used chrome. 
Here, let me show you how I did that. So we're in Photoshop right now. And as you can see, the poly metal has had an effect on the surface of the water, making it kind of white, and also on the fork. And you can see the beginnings of that metallic chrome look that I was searching for, but it's not there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the layers panel and I'm going to duplicate the background layer because I don't want to destructively handle that uh, background layer. So Command-J gets me to duplicate that layer. And now we can go ahead with the filter gallery. But because this is a 16-bit image, the image gallery will not, uh, the filter gallery will not allow me to do things that I want to do. So I'm just going to go up to image mode and change it from 16 bits to 8 bits. And now I will have full access to the filter gallery. So we go up to filter, filter gallery, and we're going to go to Chrome. And here it is here. All right. So let's just back off on the percentage of the view so that you can see what we have here. Now you can make adjustments with the smoothness and the detail of this. This is what I wanted. This is what I ended up with. You can try something else. All right. So we've got Chrome. We hit OK. And now our image has gone to Chrome. This is the original. This is the Chrome. But it's still not what we want because look what's happened. We've lost the color. You see that green that's just going through there? I want that in there. And we've lost it. And it just isn't exactly what I want yet. So this is where we go to the blend modes. Blend modes are over here. And we can scroll down until we get one that we like. Darken's not bad. Multiply is better, but it's color burn. That's the one that I want it because look at the metallic effect. Look at the chrome effect, color burn. And it's that simple. That's how I got my chrome metallic type image. Okay, so you see how I get the chrome effect and over here too a different, slightly different composition. And you see the color coming through and things like that. And it was really nice for me. But you know something? It didn't satisfy. So I kept on experimenting and I got rid of the poly metal and I went just with the black. And my first attempt with just black came out like this. So, eh, kind of left me cool. Wasn't too impressed. But I did like the way, because of the water, it was playing with the angles of the fork. So I like that. So I turned the fork around a little bit and this was much more to my liking as we were getting more abstract. And you, again, you see the water, the way it's playing with the angles, but it still qu wasn't quite what I was looking for. The next shot was exactly what I was looking for. I ended up printing it. It's a fork at rest. It's really hard to get your eye on what it is exactly. It's very, very abstract, but it's what I wanted. It is black and it is white. And because of the water, which you can't even see, because of the water, you have that warp in the fork and that attracts my eye. And also look at that line of the fork right there. That to me is what actually makes the shot is that line. So I got what I wanted in the end. This was not the shot I had been looking for at the beginning, but it's what I ended up with. And it's what I ended up li liking the most. Now I tried a few more. I tried this one. And you see the green there? That's from the edge of the Pyrex dish. You know how it has a little bit of green there? So that's what that is reflecting in that. And you can see the water and the way it's reflecting. And then this one, again, I've turned it into black and white, but you can see the double reflection going into the water, a different kind of effect. And using a different type of vessel, I just had the fork coming down into the water. And that was a, a different kind of look. But the fork at rest was the one that I really liked in the end for me. It'll be interesting to see what you do. Well, that's it for the very first episode of Macro World. And there's going to be lots more coming. I hope you come by and enjoy it with us. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you to shoot small and think big.